Hi friends, in one of my videos I showed a simple solid state relay circuit for car turn signals based on a high power field effect transistor. A link to this video can be found in the description. Today we will talk about the usual electromagnetic relay. This is a simple, not very durable and seemingly unremarkable relay. Where and for what purposes can it be used? What simple but very useful constructions can be assembled at its base? By the way, this video is intended for beginners. Well, let's start. The first circuit is based on a relay and electrolytic capacitor. In order to understand what it is intended for, first let's understand how this circuit works. Plus of power, for example 12 volts, through the power contacts of the relay is supplied to the positive pin of the capacitor and simultaneously to the coil. Minus from the power supply comes directly, by passing the contacts. Initially, before the power is applied, the mentioned relay contacts are closed. As soon as the power is supplied, the relay is activated, contacts 1 and 2 will open and contacts 1 and 3 will close. But, by this time, enough energy has accumulated in the capacitor and the coil is powered by the energy stored in the capacitor. As long as the voltage on the capacitor is sufficient to power the relay coil, the contacts will be in this state. Over time, due to discharge of the capacitor, the solenoid of the relay can't hold the contacts in this state, the relay turns off and the contacts return to their original state. Again, the capacitor is charged, the relay is triggered, and the process is repeated again, that is, the relay periodically changes its state, turn on and off. The interval of turn on and off depends solely on the capacitor capacitance. The larger the capacitance, the longer the solenoid will hold the contacts and vice versa. There are several ways to connect the load to our vibrator. First, in the gap of one of the power wires. Second, use the third relay's contact. Third, use a relay with two contact groups. The first two options have several drawbacks. Firstly, it is impossible to connect high power loads and secondly, it will affect the operating frequency of the circuit. The third variant is the most correct since contacts that will carry out the switching of the load aren't connected in any way with the control contacts which will make it possible to connect any loads to the circuit, including the mains ones. The power of the connected load depends solely on the contacts of relay, that is, on the current allowed through these contacts. This parameter is indicated on the relay case, as is the voltage of the solenoid winding. This circuit, like all subsequent ones, is so simple that there is no point to make a printed circuit board. But if you are fond of electronics, and want your homemade products to look like a factory product, I advise the GLCPCB company for the production of printed circuit boards. They will make boards of any complexity for you and the cost of the boards is only 2 bucks for 10 pieces. Your order will be completed just a day from the date of the receipt. Just upload the Gerber file of your board to the GLC website, select the options you need and that's all. A link to the company's website and to a detailed video describing the production process of the boards can be found in the description. The second circuit is a bit more complicated. Here, in addition to the capacitor, two other components were added, a resistor and a transistor. Can be used any NPN transistors of low or medium power. This circuit is a system of delay when you turn on, something like a time relay. When power is applied to the circuit, the relay doesn't turn on immediately but after some time has passed. At the initial time, the capacitor is slowly charging through the limiting resistor. As soon as the voltage on the capacitor reaches a certain value, somewhere 0.6 to 0.7 volts, the transistor is triggered. Through its open transition, power is supplied to the coil, a relay is activated and switching the load. 
The delay time depends on the value of the capacitor and resistor. The greater the capacitance and resistance, the greater the delay, and vice versa. Here is the following circuit. It may seem that I forgot to draw some components, but apart from the relay, we don't need anything else. The principle of operation is the same as that of the first circuit. The power through the closed contacts goes to the solenoid. It activated and the contacts opens. So the power supply disconnects and since the solenoid is de-energized, the contacts return to their original state. Such a breaker isn't controlled. Operation occurs with a rather high frequency. And I must say that the standard relays will not survive long time in this mode. Many will doubt of the meaning of this circuit, but there is a sense. The fact is that inductive loads have the phenomenon of self-induction, and our solenoid is just the same inductance. What's the trick? At that moment, when power is supplied to the solenoid, it accumulates some energy. When the supply of circuit will disconnect, the solenoid gives up the accumulated energy, and the self-induction EMF is much higher than the supply voltage. Even powered by a 9-volt battery, the self-induction voltage from the solenoid is up to several tens or even hundreds of volts. But don't be afraid, it isn't dangerous. However, getting an unpleasant electric shock is still possible. If we add a rectifier diet and a storage capacitor to our circuit, we get something similar to a stun gun. Everything is simple here. The breaker provides a periodic power supply to the solenoid after the power is turned off. The self-induction voltage through the rectifier accumulates in the capacitor. A capacitor must be for 250 or 400 volts. Due to its small capacity, the circuit operates a few seconds. It's enough to charge the capacitor. The accumulated energy can perform a useful action or something else. Of course, this thing can't be used as a shoker, but it beats very unpleasantly. An interesting variant of the photo relay can be built on just two components, a photo resistor and a relay. Even the simplest photo relays, which can be found on the net, have a transistor and a pair of resistors in their composition. It is understandable because such circuits are more practical, but the presented version also has the right to life. The photoresistor is the most common. The resistance in the dark is very big. In daylight, it drops to several hundred ohms. I think the principle of work is clear. In daylight, the resistance of the photoresistor is minimal. The relay is activated and contacts 1 and 2 are open. The load, for example, the lamp is off. With the advent of darkness, the resistance of the photoresistor begins to increase. Hence, the current in the relay coil will decrease. At some point, the current will not be enough and the relay will turn off. In this case, through close contacts 1 and 2, the load will be connected. The light bulb will light the courtyard or path. The disadvantage of this circuit, in contrast to the more complex, is the lack of adjustment. Well, this video comes to an end. For more information, including links to my laboratory equipment, look at the description. Let me remind you that the material is prepared solely for informational and educational purposes. Please rate the video and share it with your friends. If you have questions related to electronics, ask them in our group. Now, I say goodbye until new meetings with you was Kasyam TV.